Hello, my name is Jeffrey Thrash. I am an animator, and today I'm going to show you how I worked around a problem when compositing in my recent Plankton parody animation. If you have watched my recent animation, Plankton Voice Crack, and looked in the quality settings, you'll notice that it goes up to 4K resolution, or 3840 by 2160 pixels. What's the big deal, you ask? Well, while the background is native 4K, Plankton himself and the credit sequence were much, much smaller and had to be blown up strategically to look like he belongs in the scene. As you can see in this image, you can't just blow up a tiny image into a giant image and expect decent results. When you blow up a raster image, it just looks bad. Either the pixels or squares that make up a raster image look like an old NES game blown up or the photo editor will try to add ugly smears and blurs in an attempt to make it look slightly less horrible. The usual solution, then, is to use vector images, which always, always look sharp no matter how close you zoom into it. Sounds like the perfect solution, right? Just use vector animation programs like Adobe Animate and Toon Boom Harmony instead of raster programs like TV Paint and Krita, right? That is the solution most artists use. However, for a hobbyist like me, I can't justify spending at least $20 a month for Adobe Animate, and I certainly can't afford paying $75 a month for the full Toon Boom Harmony experience. I'm trying to teach myself free alternatives like Pencil 2D and the 2D Animation Workspace in Blender 2.8, but at the time I was working on this cartoon, I didn't have a clue how to use either option, so I decided to stick with Cre Animating in Krita for now. When I was working on Google Gobble Thanksgiving 2019, which will not be out until November, but I technically finished before Plankton Voice Crack, the f first solution to this problem I tried was animating a native 4K. This did work, but it made animating much more painful than usual because every time I saved, my computer would freeze for up to 5 minutes straight, and I wouldn't be able to get back to work until it was done. When combined with Krita's autosave function, it would mean I was in it interrupted every 10 minutes and had to take a walk or something for 5 minutes until Krita was done saving, then animate for 10 more minutes, then wait 5 more minutes for my computer to unfreeze. Clearly, my computer that could play Final Fantasy XV Windows Edition at 120 frames per second couldn't handle animating in 4K, and Google Gobble took much longer than I had intended. With Plankton, then, I decided to make the animation at the lowest resolution I could, then blow it up later. This made animating on my computer a lot snappier, and I could spend my extra time on shadows and highlights to each individual tooth, among other things. And most importantly, I wasn't clawing my eyes out while working on this. However, now I had the challenge of making it look not horrible with my super sharp 4K background. Here's the full setup in Natron, a short, sort of free alternative to Nuke. As you can see, I didn't have to do anything with the background. It was made in 4K resolution and thus will look fine in a 4K video. With Plankton himself, however, I had to add a couple of nodes and adjust a few sliders to make sure he doesn't look like that B-movie grasshopper from the 50s. The first thing I did was simply add a resize node and make Plankton the same size as the background. 3840 by 2160 pixels. Then I added a sharpen node to make him look less soft blown up. The settings I used are in the right side of the window, but of course your numbers will be different depending on the context, so I'm afraid that even with this tutorial you'll have to use your brain when working on your own projects. Sorry. The real magic happens when I use the bilateral blur node, which at least in this case blurs the ugly pixel squares but not any important detail I want to keep. In this case, I adjust the slider which I assume says Value Sexually Transmitted Disease Dev. I don't know what STD stands for in this case, but I'm 95% sure I'm right. With just a few nodes then, I was able to go from this to this. Unfortunately, it still looks kind of bad in Natron's preview window, but once the video was fully rendered, the results speak for themselves especially in the credit sequence. Those handwritten letters would look blurry and out of focus without this node setup. This is the end of the tutorial. 
but if you stick around, I'll quickly show you a nice lazy solution for artists that are too lazy to make complicated node setups, but at the same time diligent enough to sit through a long tutorial. If you want to enlarge a picture you took on your phone without too much hassle, or see what old PlayStation 1 games would look like with a much higher resolution, there are several AI resizing programs that you can simply use with an internet browser like Google Chrome or Ecosia. The one I use for these examples is called BigJPEG.com, which I will link to in the description. Here I used a frame of animation of Plankton, straight out of Krita before all the compositing and color correction. It actually looks pretty great and probably does a better job of preserving the original look than what I did in Natron. However, the website I use only lets you upscale up to 3000 images per month, and that is if you pay for the premium version. So if you're trying to upscale a full 22 minute animation that is about 18,000 individual frames of animation, this site is not for you, unless you are open to the idea of uploading only 3,000 images every 30 or 31 days. You also have to pay extra if you want to scale up images 8 times or 16 times. Fortunately, unless you want to make an image for a billboard, and until 8K or 16K TVs become feasible, you won't need to make your pictures that big. Just to test the limits of this website, I found a screenshot of Final Fantasy VIII, the original 1998 PS1 version, and wanted to see how much sharper it would look in 4K. The results weren't nearly as successful as I hoped. The first attempt simply blows up the image, and as a result, exposes all the graphical artifacts that you wouldn't have noticed before, especially in the background. I then tried turning up the noise reduction to highest, now it looks like smooth, sharp finger paint. Ah. At least it is a better solution than whatever Final Fantasy VIII Remastered used. Thank you for seeing through this video and be sure to check out my cartoons if you want more.